Well, hello there, Minecrafters. Thanks for coming by. The other day, I put out a video on what I call the auto clock. Now, that's basically a concept that you can use as a map maker that allows the player to come in range, activate a clock, which would have all your commands on it, whatever mechanic you want to do. And then when they leave the area, that clock itself shuts off. Now, that's pretty important because it reduces any type of possible extra lag when you don't need that clock running. It's also resettable. So the player can go in as many times as they want. Now, um, this is possible with buttons or pressure plates, but I wanted a way to do it wirelessly. And typically, wirelessly means that there is some sort of master clock running in the spawn chunk that's always checking for players. But that is a clock running 100% of the time. So this was the design I came up with. It required uh, six command blocks on the clock, plus three to start it, and scoreboards. But when I put out that video, I had some really awesome feedback, and thankfully, <laughs> some really smart people found a way to even condense it further to six blocks total. That's four on the clock and two uh, for the starting position. So I want to show you the new design of the auto clock. Okay, so here is the new version of the auto clock. Now, this was made possible mostly by a guy named Slice Lime. Thanks, buddy. I really appreciate your work uh, and helping me figure out the commands. Also, I got Skyliner W to help me figure out a spawner command that helped a little bit of a glitch from the last design. But it is fairly condensed. We have the initial startup section here that did require three blocks before. Now it's only two command blocks. And the clock itself has been reduced by two command blocks. So the old one was six. This is now down to four. So should reduce even a bit more lag. Also, no scoreboards are required of this. So that should be helpful for people who have a tough time with scoreboards. But let me demonstrate how this works. This here, I've got this kind of simulation. This is going to be your area in the map where you need your clock running. Maybe it's like a castle you walk into or something where you have a puzzle that requires a clock. And then over here, we have your spawn chunks or we're going to simulate them as a spawn chunk. So you can have these far apart. They don't have to be side by side. Uh, so basically, you walk into the area and your clock starting. We've got a clock on there and then when you leave it shuts off. Now it is multiplayer friendly because if you activate it and then you have another player in here the clock is still gonna keep running because that player is in there trying to do whatever they can. The other player can be out here or as many as you want and then when that player leaves you'll see the clock shuts off. So that's pretty important in case you have multiplayer I think. The other thing is I've kept this the spawner in here, it does run off of the uh, falling sand spawner. And then when it disappears, then you don't have those particles running. But there was a bit of a, a glitch, so to speak, that if the, the old falling sand spawner was spawning at a certain location, it was possible that the items could spawn too fast and then you would have a bunch of little redstone blocks popping out. So I figured out a way to stop that. So overall, it is a better design. So let's go over the commands next. All right, so just like the other design, we are running this off of a falling sand spawner that runs a redstone block as falling sand. So let me show you here. Once I get in range, it turns it to leaf block. And then when I leave, <laughs> when I leave, <laughs> when I leave, it turns it back into a the, the redstone uh, spawner, which uh, is ready to go again, resettable. And then over here, you'll see uh, that redstone is going to launch right where that is. That's going to activate the clock. And then when I leave, it shuts it off. So that's basically how that works. Uh, over here, let's start with these commands. Um, first of all, this needs to be air, has to be set to air. If you don't have air, if you have any other type of block in there, basically the, the uh, falling sand that is redstone block, it can't actually turn into a redstone block because there's a block occupying this spot, which means you can't activate this, which means you can't activate the clock. So it's really important that you have this set to air. And then on top, we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to execute anybody in a box area of wherever our play area, wherever we want our clock to run. We're going to execute. If anybody's there, we're going to fill uh, these coordinates with redstone block, which happens to be these right here. Now, this part here, I'll just go over this real quick. Anybody in this area, the way that that works is that I've got my lowest coordinates here of my, my uh, play area. So uh, this box here, I've picked my lowest coordinates. In other words, the most negative ones. And we're going to be looking towards the positive directions. So you pick your lowest coordinates, and then you go back 
to the command here and you can see I have uh, DX DY and DZ that means basically from this coordinate I'm gonna be able to have a box area where it's 12 coordinates toward the X direction 10 coordinates high or 10 blocks high I guess and then uh, in the Z direction 12 blocks so I basically create a box around an area where the clock will run and then over here we've got this is the big difference uh, we're gonna execute uh, those same things so if anybody's in that area then we're gonna fill these blocks which are these the clock blocks the clock blocks <laughs> with a uh, redstone block if they're clay and then under here we have a regular fill replace so because this is regular fill replace and this has a requirement that means that this clock will always revert to clay if it shuts off which is really important because this whole spawner reset is dependent on if there's clay so what it's doing is it's executing at anybody in the map is detecting if this block is clay and the only way that block can be clay is if the if the clock shuts off if it is clay then it's going to reset that spawner ready to go again so basically if there's nobody in there then that spawner is going to be there if there's somebody in there we're going to actually delete the uh, spawner so that we don't have the particles. So same thing that we're executing at everybody in that block. We're going to remove it and change it to leaves. But if it's able to shut the clock off, then we're going to change uh, that leaf block into a spawner block again. So I'm going to go through the spawner. This is a little more complicated than last time, but uh, I'll try to break it down. Before we go into the spawn potentials, that's the big difference. This uh, this is to kind of prevent a little bit of a glitchy part there. Uh, basically, we're going to pick a redstone block. It's going to launch a redstone block at these coordinates. It's very important that you have the decimal places in there, otherwise it won't work. And these coordinates will change dependent on what your map needs. They're going to be set wherever this is. That means that when the spawner is uh, is um, active, then those coordinates are where the, the actual falling sand is going to fall. And then at the end, we've got our player range. You're going to have to change that depending on where it, it is in your map. You have to adjust it. It might be further. It might be closer. Your spawner, your um, falling sand spawner could be anywhere you want it to be. You just have to adjust where your player range is. Now, the big difference is uh, from last time is this spawn potential section. And you can see I've got type, nope, wait, one. That means that this potentials is going to take over whatever that spawner data has in it. But because we have the spawn data tag, that's going to spawn first. So I'm going to spawn a redstone block in the spawn data here. I'm going to spawn a redstone block with all that information first only once. And then it's going to change that spawner into this junk here, this node. It's going to basically not going to be able to spawn anything. That just means that it's going to summon or going to spawn one block here. And we're not going to have any extra blocks that are able to pop out of here and create a bunch of like uh, extra entities. Uh, because there is the potential that you could have, even though you've got this air, the falling sand could fall faster. I've seen it happen. Uh, so we're going to eliminate that, eliminate any type of lag. So that that is basically the whole uh, explanation there. It is a little more complicated, but I have put all the commands in the description. Hopefully that helps you guys. It's definitely going to help me. But uh, enjoy your Minecrafting. Let me know in the comments if it helps you. And we'll see you next time.